Alrighty. Uh, guess this is our first official broadcast of Minecraft Mornings for 30 Old Gaming. Which I was evil and sneaky. And managed to get myself. The natural texture pack. This is, you'll notice for a brief moment, last time I played this, I had to do a. This build is completely legitimate. Up to a point where I had decided to be nice and let someone in. They wanted to try building something. And they decided to start griefing. And I had to go into creative to repair the damage. Other than that, uh, the game was set saved as creative from the get-go because I have myself, well, a build like this. You don't want Endermen and Creepers blowing the shit out of things, so even though why all the resources were gathered naturally and placed where they are, I wasn't going to let this get foobarred by Creepers. This is a house that I had uh, started building on a PC server and ever since the Microsoft transition, it had uh, recently closed, but I was on that server for three years. And this started off as a 10x10 build, then worked into a 20x30 L-shaped cottage with a diner in the bottom. And I continued to build up further and further from there until it became the massive 50 by 40 structure you see being built right now. I've been working on this for about two weeks. The island it's on started out being a little taller than that island over there. And I think it was the first four days I spent leveling it off. I was streaming it then, had a few people watching, but sadly Twitch wasn't exactly recording my stuff. I wasn't registered as an official viewer yet, or a broadcaster. Which, damn it, always hit L3 to run. <laughs> But yeah, it was about three days ago I had noticed that I had finally started being archived on Twitch as an official broadcaster and my stuff was starting to get saved. So if you ever hear me talk about the official start of my streaming, you'll know that it pretty much started yesterday when I was ranked as an official broadcaster on Twitch, Ustream, YouTube. Even though PS4 can't exactly live connect on YouTube, pretty much all the good footage that I can get will be transferred over. Thinking about building a cottage or something up here, it's a good general flat piece of land. I could probably put my little uh, L-shaped cottage up here, nice balcony hanging over. But yeah, there's the top of the house. It took me two weeks to get the roof done. <laughs> Actually, a little less. But uh. I was having a huge problem with the wool. God, can I even... Yeah, I made it. I was having this massive problem with uh, the sheep. Still having it. I've 
not really looked further into it. But basically, this is a giant farmhouse, which on the PC server was, since there was trading there, was meant to supplement everything I would ever need for both the building and for trading for other materials I didn't feel like outsourcing. The problem that came with that was once I started doing it, everyone else decided to start building a farmhouse. So I never really got to trade for anything. Especially once it got too big, the server admin said, well, if I started trading with anyone, I'd literally crush the economy, being the super farm that I built. Which, being I've only do done this a couple of weeks on the PS4 version, I don't quite have going. This is just my little emergency keep-you-alive resources. Which... I plan to further supplement today. Okay. The PC version. Once you had tamed a pet, it was basically yours. It wouldn't disappear. It wouldn't get, well, it would get murdered, but no, my carrots. But basically, they would stay where you put them. Here, I have somehow animals that either spawn or get out of their pens, like the chicken that walked past. This is the sheep pen. As you can see, it is disturbingly lacking sheep, as the problem I was mentioning with wool earlier. I have, six times now, gotten three to five sheep here, tried it in three different pens, bred it till there was about close to 20 sheep, and would sit here for an hour to two hours just snipping the wool to get that I need for my paintings, my decorations, the roof, and they would usually last a day, but for some reason when I would log off put the PlayStation in rest mode and come in the next morning, all the sheep would be gone. Fences are unable to be gotten over, so this bank blank space here means nothing, but the third space does mean something, so as you can see, by Minecraft physics, there is this is pretty much considered a solid wall. Nothing can get through it. go through around you can see this is also a completely solid wall with nothing able to get through except for the two magical floating cows I guess as they pop up on the hay bale and thus get up there but the point is there's no way they can get into the other pens so even if a wolf does spawn, they're not going to spawn in the pens with the sheep. And if they spawn outside, there's no way they can get to them. So where does 20 sheep just magically disappear to? Still trying to figure that out. So far, we've found at least 14 mushroom islands. Two of them are relatively close by. Actually went through the trek of going there, grabbing a mushroom, pulling him across the water, leading him here, taming him, going back, getting another one, and learning that they can be bred. So now I have three mushroom crows. Excuse me, I've not played Minecraft in a year and a half, so I'm kind of excited about the new things that can be done. I didn't know mushrooms could be tamed and bred. But it definitely supplements feeding issues. Alrighty. Still don't know what to do with those walls right there. Alright, I said I was going to start work. 
and supplementing farm. Alrighty. Mean sugar canes need to be put down there for emergencies. What else? Cactus. I'm going to be needing green later. One requires water. The other requires sand. Means I gotta find my water bucket. There it is. Lovely. Sand, I do believe. And there we go, trying to run again. Now that my inventory is clean, I'm going to have to get my old supplies back. That's my nether run. And pickaxe for emergencies, torches, dirt, shovel. God! these buttons. Where the hell did I put myself on the chest before I switched to repair mode? Yeah, it's getting dark. Could this be it? Yes. Good. Emergency torches. Flush. Okay, I may be a little slow on things being just got this texture pack, so I'm gonna have to take some time getting used to what everything looks like. That's right, send, I need send. eggs. Let's collect my eggs. Eggs are great for getting more chickens, which... One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm okay with now. Used to have, I think, about ten, so... That will be needing work in the future. Sand. Please tell me I didn't spill all my glass and just start sand in the glass. Looks like I did. Don't mind the floor in here. I've not decided what I'm going to put pattern on the floor. The rest of it after using three different. Let's see. First, I started off with brick, then, I started off with sandstone, and ultimately was happy with the birch. The pattern in default Minecraft was not noisy enough to draw away from the actual pattern of the tiles. Boxes were here from when I was making or er, leveling off the uh, playing field. Twenty-five ought to do fine. This is the road I am known for in six servers now on the PC. The road is nicely lighted by hidden torches underneath. Got to dig down. It's let's see, one, two, three. It's four deep by six wide. And as you see, it makes a nice little pattern. It looks absolutely gorgeous when it's laid out in an entire town. It keeps everything nice and brightly lit. Once I started doing it, everyone else on the server kind of led to follow. 
Sadly, those servers are down. They can't be seen no more. Pity, pity. Alrighty. Don't need emergency water set up. We're doing this. I have never been to the end. Probably never will. I've got no reason to go there. I am a builder. I guess for now, that will supplement as our emergency. Which, I should get half stones. It's gonna be there for an extended period, I might as well. Stones lying around somewhere. But we can always just make more. Six will be fine. This whole area used to be laden with grass, and I stoned it over to prevent the spot extra spawning of all the wolves that were coming down here to see if it would help fix the sheep issue. As you can see, it didn't. Alrighty. Take that out. This is a trick not many people that I played with knew. Basically, if you're ever doing a farm that requires water on the inside. Put a half stone block over it, that way when you're going through digging up the crops, you're not falling in and having to pull yourself out, slowing the process down. something I was proud of. Yes, yes, pride's a bad thing. I knew. I suppose for giggles I can work one there. As you can see, this is a nice little pattern that I designed for my super farm, which future episodes you'll see get built up. But it is, space-wise, the most efficient way for that kind of farm. And uh, I will be having this pattern repeating over a sub-farm consisting over a 40 by 50 
block space, which I like to call the maze. Once you go into it, you can get lost. All right, what else was I wanted to do? Oh yes, the cactus. Damn you, cactus. Cactus cannot be next to anything. Which complicates matters. Should supplement my resource farm for emergency purposes quite nicely. I'll give me my green dye. This will be for more bookshelves. Uh, but, uh, Potatoes we had found in a treasure chest in the nether. I think it had two potatoes in it. Slowly starting to get that up. The carrots, there is a carrot patch. Wouldn't exactly call it a village, it's one house out in the desert. That had one guy in it and a little carrot patch, thank God. Pumpkins we have found several of. So, we're doing pretty good. It took us a week and a half to find this one little house. And there's that mystery chicken. not been able to notice uh, I don't build a dirt hut I don't sit there and build something out of one block and leave it to go I like to use practically everything I like to think outside of the box I try and build as decoratively yet functionally as possible Including to the point of showing off even rarer materials. Uh, the pattern that I have intended for here, at least it was on the computer server, was a giant H built out of diamond blocks. Not joking. Uh, it had gold corners and the center was filled with lapis lazuli. And everyone was yelling at me, why are you using these rare materials? You could be making great tools out of it. It's like, well, nobody really uses gold for anything. At the time, lapis wasn't used for a whole lot. And... For diamond pickaxes, I saw no real reason except for mining obsidian. Other than that, I'm not going to be using it for cobblestones. They wear out too much, and they're too hard to find. The only thing that left for it was, after three years of collecting, decoration. And it looked nice with the texture pack I was using from Painterly. Uh, this is the foyer, which I recently finished. With a nice, unusually shaped sh hanging chandelier, paintings everywhere. 
Not exactly like it was in the PC version. Had a bit of an issue trying to remember how the stairs went perfectly. These walls right here are not how they were. I'm still trying to remember and tinker with them. Uh, these little decorations right here on the PC version. Oddly enough, you see how you got the item frame here with the uh, iron rail in it? You were able to put these on the wall like they are now and then put the trap over it and close it and it would have a three layer effect. And it was something people didn't do. It added more detail and texturing depending on how you layered it. Sadly, you try and do it here as soon I mean, it's fine once it's open, but once you close it, everything behind it pops off. I don't know why. It's, I guess, it's just something that they patch in either the game in general or just the console version. So, that's less detail right there. The interesting thing that goes with it is the fact that my favorite torch design, which involves the same three-layer pattern, an item frame, a fence, and a torch, as opposed to just having a torch magically hanging there, you've got what looks like, you know, something nice and detailed holding the torch up. Any torches you see popping on the wall like this one right here is just a light placeholder until I can figure out what else I'm going to use for that space to light the area. But yeah, these work fine. The trap, for some reason, doesn't. I'm guessing it's got something to do with how the space updates once the door closes. Okay, as far as the house design was going, uh, this is the entryway. This was meant to be a trophy room. I'd have item frames along here with uh, showing off stuff I've gathered in the nether, which I've yet to put back up. I'd have a couple of paintings up here, which I've not done yet. Um, paintings here. Um, this would be bookshelves. Uh, I'd have a couple of cauldrons here because I'd have the library over there. This will become a door leading to what I call my potion room, which will have a bunch of chests, potion stands, more item frames with potion ingredients on it for decoration. This is my enchanting room, which I've not yet fully finished. I'm supposed to have pressure plates and an iron door there to help keep the area dark. The torch will be gone. Because for some, I don't know if they fixed it in the console version or recently since I played it. For some reason, the darker the room that the enchanting table was in, the higher grade enchantments that would pop out. You could easily test it back then by sitting there, running a few enchantments, seeing which popped up for the ranks, and knocking the torch out and then recycling through it, and you'd go from like level 12 enchantments up to 30 just because the torch was there. So we had to keep our torches, or our enchantments in a dark space. Off the foyer was at the time meant to be two shops. There'd be a wall here sealing this off because this will be the potion room. Uh, there'd be a counter here couple of display tables and then there would be two aisles of different stuff theming what each shop was and like 30 to 40 chests. Uh, this was done back in the time when chests literally took up the entire space they were placed in so you could use them as walls, floors, whatever. Then they came up with the chest update which made them take up less space and therefore you'd have gaps in the floor and that had to get replaced. But yeah, I'd have natural ingredients like 
wood, plants, wheat, grass, all that stuff on this side. And everything had like an earthy tone. We'd use a lot of woods for the floor, the walls. And over here was Miner's Mart where you had your stone, your gold, resources, everything that had to be mined out. And everything, the floors and whatnot had a brick tone. The, if I remember correctly, the floors were obsidian. The counter was clay and brick. And it was really nicely done up too. Sadly, I never got to trade one thing because of the earlier mentioned I had so much resources that it would have collapsed the economy and I was told I'm not allowed to trade. <sighs> the original store house was just the 30 by 30 U-shape. And over the years, I decided to go bigger, added a deck around the entire space. Then the deck only became the sides, and I had made the potion and the library on the back part. This is not finished, by the way. This will be a glass wall put up here. Well, eventually. But the purpose for that is because of the second floor, which was meant to be the living quarters, which was far too big for me, so I had a bunch of friends that were also living here. Uh, this was the dining area. There was a wall here. Going to about here, I believe. And this little nook that I'm circling was the kitchen with stairs leading down in the spiral going down into the patio on the first floor had a little sauna room that was on the first floor that I had right here and then the stairs would be coming back up this way this room would be the bedroom with a little space cut off right here that I had a bathroom into that will be ba built back up in this house but as you can see, I've not gotten to it yet. Uh, wooden supports, I've been testing out, trying to find something that looks right, but still looks good. Still experimenting with that. God. Boy, have I been talking to myself. Alright. Alright. Going down to what I used to call my forge in the PC version. Haven't had much of a reason for it in here. Once the house got built up, it uh, kind of became useless, so I don't really have much use for it. I was thinking about putting more pictures up here, giving it an art gallery feel, but the quartz walls which was recently mined out in the nether. I like the pattern just so well. I figured I'd leave it as it is until I can find a real use for it. But uh, as you can see, we got the front porch. This area is glass looking down into the forge, which looks down into the atrium, which in a couple of past videos you would have seen me digging out. This atrium is nowhere near finished. The walls are going to be completely redone. As you can see, I've already started layering it off the... Each fifth floor in wood. There's... Each of the six panel flat sections on all four sides are going to be mined out three blocks back. Replaced with uh, stone brick. Then a waterfall layer with glass in front of it to keep it contained. So basically you're going to have four massive waterfalls going down each wall. The inner layers, the corners, I have not quite decided what I'm going to do with just yet. I think each 
fourth or eighth section here, I'm going to replace with uh, closed stone lamps to help supplement the light. But as far as the rest of the corner decorations, I'm going to have to see what I can get for resources. I'm probably going to use colored wool of some degree. Probably blues and purples. Um, is it getting dark? Yes, it is. Damn it. Double click to run. Double click to run. My apologies for the inconvenience. I don't want to get creeper while down there. You'll notice I've got multiple beds because I do have terminal forests and red ravens that do pop in on occasion. Alright. As you can see, I got a super tree. It took me... Uh, I think a stack and a half of collected bones broken down into bone meal to get this tree. You'll see in the video that I had gotten with Zara, I had a decent tree that was built up. And it looked nice, but it wasn't to my satisfaction. It was half the height of this one and put a bunch of stone around it kept putting more and more bone meal on it replacing this you know cutting down the smaller trees that would pop up and then right when i was about to run out of bone meal this beautiful monstrosity which i have since covered vines popped up and just completely filled the atrium this is far more glorious of a tree than I ever had in the PC version and I'm absolutely in love with it once I got it built up I actually had to go around the spire staircase and knock out close to 50 plus leaf blocks just to make walking around it even possible but once I got that beautiful thing done I came down got the remaining bone meal and even then had to farm a little extra and I would put build up smaller trees as you can see here to give some decoration and more fullness to the trunk instead of having one trunk there's basically one mega super tree and four smaller trees or not four but three smaller trees built up around it in which then I run around and lovingly vined up Better switch to my sword. Uh, if you watch any of the pa recent past two videos on the Minecraft, uh, you will find out that digging this out was quite the challenge. Uh, I think it was about seven layers up. Let's see, seven... Okay, eight layers, I apologize. As you can see, I've got a mine shaft digging down just a short distance underneath the house. You know, glass layers right there, that's ground level. We hit this massive mine shaft. Digging the atrium out through that mess was no easy task. But that was nothing. It got infinitely worse when we were digging down wrong button and we nicked into this beauty and you can't well see it here let's see if I can hop down come on as you can see it continues going underneath and basically, past where this tree was, through here, still got the wood platform from the support, to about here, that ravine continues going. Me and Red had went down, and we had found out it's actually 
three ravines that intersect with each other. That's the torches. But yeah, it, it's a massive cave system. Three ravines, you've got the mines. And the plans for this... See, right now, I dig down. I'm falling to my doom. That's the cobblestone. But, uh, the plans for this atrium is this floor where I'm standing now is planned to be pure glass. Just like the rest of everything, you're supposed to see down in layers as you come down and explore. But it's gonna be glass. And that, uh... reed farm that I was telling you about, the maze, will be right below here. Take that back. There is a uh, two-space high art gallery. Was it two spaces or was it three? It was three, that's right. Okay, so it's a three-space high art gallery that you will see through there, and the only way you're going to be able to see the art gallery walls is if, like, if you're standing on this wall and you're looking down through the glass on the far wall, you'll be able to see some paintings on the wall. But from down here, you won't publicly be able to go any further because there will be a secret door. If I can ever figure out how to get the redstone to work again. That will lead down, not into the art chamber, but behind it in an outer ring. There is what I like to call the storeroom, which will consist of over 200 large chests, which over the three years I was pretty much storing everything into. It had gotten to the point if I ever needed anything, I didn't have to go mining for it except for a few rare materials. I'd just go to my storeroom. That's going to be a bitch getting all over again. But, uh... The art gallery will also have a glass floor, and that will lead down into the uh, visual of the reed maze. Which again, is 50 by 40 blocks. And beneath that, since you can't exactly see through the reed maze, that's where the glass stops, is where the super farm begins. You've got the first layer, which is the reed maze, the second layer which is the general farm. Damn, I forgot the cocoa beans up top. Uh, there will be... One wall will be cocoa beans. Another wall will be... Pumpkins. The third wall will be cactus. The fourth wall will be... Um, pumpkins and... Watermelons and all the spaces in the center will be the carrots, the wheat, the potatoes. And that was meant to super supplement the trade thing, which never happened. Uh, below that was the tree farm. It was 40 by 50 by 9 high, which allowed me to make a tree farm to supplement every type of tree except for the jungle which requires I believe 12 spaces for some of them to grow so that section actually went too deeper from that layer if I had broom I would dig straight down to the bedrock I'd literally get a couple of pickaxes and just dig straight down with nothing else in my inventory because that's a futile effort with Minecraft. But once you got down there, I'd hit the bedrock and get that 40 by 50 area, mine it out to a room that was nine high. That would be my slime spawn. Mining it out also would usually yield me quite a few diamonds. But yeah, that'd be the slime farm. We would have, uh... If the place was built on a mountain, which sometimes, I, if I can find a mountain big enough to put this monster of a house, which on the PC version I had found one, the space between the tree farm and the slime farm would allow for 
a mob farm. 40 by 50 room with uh, water traps to push them towards the center. Which then they would fall the required, I believe, 32 blocks. To their doom at the bottom of the slime farm. I gotta move all that in the middle. Or at least in this side of the house. And uh, right at the bottom of this death shaft, I would have redstone pistons popping out to where if I wanted them to fall to their doom, they would. If I didn't want them to fall to their doom, I would pop the pistons out and instead of it being 32 blocks high, it would only be 31 and they would fall and have usually half a heart of help left, which means I could sit there and melee them to death with just a fist. And lo and wonderfully behold, I would have myself a nice experience farm. Oh god, where am I going to put all this shit? I'm going to move it indoors and it's getting dark. But again, now that I've got a ravine, i got to work around. We're talking literally tens of thousands of blocks mined out. It's going to take a while to get that dealt with. But it is in the future plans. If I got the room for it. From what I'm believing, this is general ground level, which means... I've only got 128 blocks working down. Which means between all the representative farms, I might not actually have the 32 spaces, plus the monster farm. I believe the monster farm was at least 10 high, so that would require 42, four, between 42 and 45. the basements, I mean, just this alone right here is two spaces down. The atrium beneath that's another 23 down, so we're already looking at 25 down just on that alone. You've got the reed farm, which is three walking spaces, plus the room for water, which is four, or the dirt beneath that, or the subfloor, which is five. You've got the crop farm beneath that, which needs cactus, so that's another five, so. So, let's see, 25. You're already at 35, just hitting the crop level. And that stuff disappears quick. Don't know if I can have a monster farm at water level. I'll have to do that math later. Okay, the ugly tree, which TF kind of built. He wanted to do it another three, four jungle trees, super jungle trees high. I told him no. Two's high enough to be seen from a distance. If he would have done the vines better, it would have looked better. He was starting to work on it. And then after a while, kind of gave up. We started doing other things. I might have to go over one of these days and uh, be sneaky, give it my own little personal decorative touch, make it less of a uh, random eyesore. some torches on it, make it more of a beacon. We're thinking about the possibility, don't quote me on it, but 
we uh, managed to get a, uh, another star. Well, two. One's going to be going up here near the house. Because once I get the potion room going, I'm going to sit here and farm zombies. And try and find a uh, zombified villager. Get him turned, which will get me one. Build an iron golem to protect him. Do it again for a second villager. And once I've got two villagers, you can start breeding them. And then, just like I had in the PC version, I will have villagers running all throughout the house. Offering all these wonderful trade goods. So much to do, especially when you're by yourself most of the time. All right, farm something metal. Nope, wrong door. That's twice during this stream I've done that. Shame on me. As you can see, even I can get sidetracked and lost in my own house. That jungle wood. All right. Hello, Blaze. Welcome to the stream. Don't mind me. I've been ranting on about my build the past half hour since it's my first official stream for this. Questions, comments, feel free to ask. Conversation's always a wonderful thing. Trying to get some of my emergency provisions farm that I had outside the house inside. Chicken here annoying me. You're not supposed to be out of your pen. Spaces for all my junk. Okay, I'd use that for the farm. I also use those for toilets, surprisingly. Excess of lot iron line around? Mega bathroom. Never fails. Okay. Damn it. 
Minotaur. That I shall leave there because knowing what the different woods look like is always useful. Alrighty, any of these empty? Sand, I can empty out. Massive amount of dirt that will get used for the farm. Stone blocks, being I've got that ravine I gotta build over, that will get used eventually. Emergency cactus farm's been moved, so these can go. your mess. Oh god, I forgot the mushroom farm. Well, that's usually part of the slime farm. Makes use of that giant empty space down there. moved into the pen. To the best of my knowledge, yes. We are good to go. And it's getting dark again. Damn you, moon! Always impeding my progress. Good. Just got the recent texture pack. I didn't even change over to my skin. Shame on me. What is it? Help and options. Change skin. Did I? What the hell? I bought it. Where is it? I don't want tennis, Steve. What the hell is it? Dear God, heaven help us all. Portal units, oh God. Head crab scientist. <laughs> Commander video. Yeah, he sticks out real well in this black background. a lot of stuff for a skin pack. Holy jeez. That Shogun guy, that kind of could gonna work for me. Hades, God of War. <laughs> Dr. Nefarious. The squishies. Yeah, 
Naked sheep. That looks nothing like an Enderman except for the head. Too fat. A headless meat boy. Let's see, the Templar thing would work uh, if I was going off of my Destiny character. Well, these skin packs are a little more extensive than I expected and what they showed pictures for. Ah, uh, so calm. Those were some good days. Kill zone. <laughs> Bailey would love those. Festive. I'm not a festive person, screw that. Egyptian people. Musketeers. Mole rat. Oh, lovely. Oh, the octopus is rather well done. Hedgehog looks nothing like a hedgehog. Capital. Seriously? A giant muskrat? All true. Honey badger, don't give a shit. That looks nothing like a toad. Gecko. That's what they're calling that. Lemurs. Yeah, looks nothing like a lemur. That looks more like an owl than a lemur. Panda is at least recognizable. Tiger looks like an eyesore. Siamese cat man. Okay, this is the one I had got. And I'm in the suit. Is there a word? Oh, that kind of work. Goofy soldiers. Another warrior. Another knight. Yes, it's a crocodile, which sadly is probably the closest to a dragon I am ever going to get. Sadly. They just happen to have one for random. In the Skyrim pack. Dragon Priest. Astrid. Astrid's a female. Well, I bored my viewer into leaving. No. Ooh, an Argonians. That might actually work. Yep, we're going to have to go for that Argonian warrior. Eventually, once I get the funds for it, more festive. Till then, I'm an ugly croc. <laughs> I'm an ugly crocodile. 
least I'm not a Minecraft Steve anymore. And I'm green instead of the black dragon I'm supposed to be. Okay, so we've got our outside moved in. The vines I had put down are starting to grow very nicely. The house is very, very, very nicely coming along, especially with this new texture pack. I didn't put signs under that window. Oh, dear God. Or they disappeared. Shame of shames. We're going to have to fix that. Good thing I made extras. Decorations not being completed. It's one of the few things I go OCD over. Yes, I have a very chaotic way of building things. I will work on something until I wander by and see something else that bothers me so much that the OCD kicks in and I just have to stop and fix it. Much better. Minecraft, Second Life, Artwork, 3D, 2D, I will sit there and just work on one thing like a drone until it either becomes tolerable or I find something else that drives me crazy to pull me away from my original thing. Which can lead to some sidetracking, I will freely admit. But it's just one of my quirks. I'm sorry. It's just how it goes. Might as well get those with shears. You can always use more vines. I put that in the wrong spot. And it's getting dark again. Damn you, sun, impeding my progress. I can remember exactly how those doors went. Hello, Peggy. Double check here for my. Yes, Chris. 
Over the past couple of weeks, I have been mining out the resources and cutting down the trees to build this. It is a house that I started off as a 10 by 10, then worked up to a 20 by 30 over a three year period over several PC servers, which thanks to the buyout by Microsoft kind of put a lot of those server companies in a bit of an issue and a lot of them basically couldn't for legal reasons put up the servers anymore so we logged in one day and it pretty much just said you can't access the server anymore we apologize for any inconvenience we didn't get a chance to take pictures screenshots videos or anything to try and save it and since my computer has been a brick for two years, I have been slowly trying to build it on the console out of memory from, you know, a year and a half, two years ago. And it's been going slow. Sheep again. Bad puppy. All right. Got that chore done. Yeah, considering this island used to be a mountain, that was about three or four blocks taller than this area was. Had to spend the first five days leveling the whole thing down. Yeah, it's getting there. Not counting the underground area. It's about half done from what I had it three years ago. Once I get mostly done with that, I'm going to move over to that and start decorating it a bit. But yeah, other than the fact that uh, yesterday I had to go into creative mode, I had a couple of people that wanted to come in, look around, and wanted to try a few things. One of them decided to go grief her happy, and uh, I'll admit I went into full-blown creative mode to repair the damage that was done. Other than that, this is a completely legitimate build, and where the hell my trapdoor for that go? Ugh! that sticks out like a sore thumb. Damn it. Run! Now I've got to find me another trap door. Do I have any spare... Yes, the sign of a true Minecraft builder is when everything is an absolute mess. Yeah, I was explaining earlier that I'll sit there and work on one thing and tell my OCD kicks in by something that sticks out like a sore thumb that it just has to be fixed and a 
missing trapdoor certainly would be one of them. <laughs> Thankfully I was done putting up the sign decoration, so I didn't get sidetracked off of anything. And I heard an Enderman. That is not what I want to hear. Especially in the daytime. down in the farm level. <sighs> to her front porch leading with a visual leading down into the atrium that is not finished. Front door leading into the for now finished foyer with the artwork, the hanging chandeliers. This will be the trophy room when I get stuff to put into it. With the recently added skylights that were not in the PC version. Enchanting room off to the left. To the right, there's going to be another door leading to the potion room, which I've not started. Uh, off the PC version, this was meant to be the living quarters up top, and this was going to be, well, in the PC version, it was a shop. Had the counter and some display things here, which I've not worked in. Um, two rows of treasure chests and displays, which you would go into and uh, get your trades off of for in-game currency that was modded off of Craft Bucket. But being that doesn't work here, I don't know if I'm going that route or not. But this was meant to be all the stuff that had to be mined. Stones, diamonds, ores, things like that. This side was the other shop. It was plants, trees, wood. Did I download it? The house? No. This thing was built block by block from the ground up. This is a build that I, on the PC version, I had been working for three years, and that got lost, so I had to start over from scratch. The reason why it's not taken me three years this time around is because I still remembered how most of it went around, and most of it's either easy blocks you can just get off the ground, or wood, which if you peek out here, you can see most of the trees in the area, or very tall trees because I've already mined and replanted the smaller ones. Uh, we got the deck. One on both sides. Second story, really not much to look at. I've not really started anything up here yet. Go away, cat. Uh, let's see. Damn it. Always hit L3 to try and run. Minecraft's the only game for console that doesn't have L3 to run. This is the farm level. Which we have cows, a couple of mushrooms from the nearby Mushroom Island. This used to be... How oh now is there three cows in here? This used to be the sheep farm. Um, having a serious problem with sheep. I will sit here, lead them down here, tame them. Breed them to about 20, and when I log out of the PlayStation, not Minecraft, I can play it in the morning, come back in the evening, and they'll still be there. But once the PlayStation itself gets shut down, and I come back on with a console refresh, all the sheep are gone. It's happened to me five or six times now. And I can't figure out what's causing it. There's my chickens where somehow a pig has gotten in. There's the pig pen. And, uh... 
Don't know if horses are on the console version or not. I've not seen one, but whether I get some cats from the nearby jungle or some horses or whatnot, this is what that was meant for because underneath the house in the next level down is going to be the super farm for the crops. Being that's not been dug out yet, this is the emergency crop farm. And it's getting night. Not that it matters. Where I'm going, darkness means nothing. Fornafilly. <laughs> nice name. Okay. In the PC version, when the house was small and just building up, this was my main storeroom, forge works. I'd have uh, furnaces and chests everywhere. Uh, now that the house design is expanded, there's not much use for this room. Except for just an additive leading down into the unfinished atrium. Uh, the walls are going to be completely redone. There's going to be, each wall is going to have a major waterfall going down it. As you can see, it's this nice spiral staircase going down in this beautiful super tree that took a stack and a half of bones, ground to bone meal, to finally get this gorgeous tree to pop up. Digging this out was a pain. There was a, as you can see, there's mine shafts down here, which I had to dig around. Um, there's going to be secret rooms. Yes. Do I have it now? No. The glass pattern that you see for the floors is going to continue here. You're going to see what looks like an art gallery and uh, kind of like a library and through a glass floor down here. But you're not going to be able to access it. There will be a secret room that, or door that you get in through here. But that's going to take a long time. Why? Because this part took a while to get done because of all the mine shafts that you're seeing. Where's a good one? Well, there's was an entrance there. There's an entrance there. There was like 30 of them I had to wall off. But the reason I've not gone down any further is because there is, I kid you not, three intersecting fissures that I had to sit there and wall off just to get the atrium finished. Thus you can see the cobblestone pattern right here. That's where the fissure was. So to go any further downward would require some very tedious, you know, kneeling, bricklaying, just to get that done. And I have not started that yet. I'm going to wait until I get at least done with the walls first. Any other major issues before I start filling in a gigantic chasm to start making my underground super farms. Considering those are going to be 40 by 50 blocks. Hopefully I can get some friends in here to help with that. As of right now, no. I don't have any secret rooms. This will lead to them, though. But that's the tour of what I've done in the past three weeks. It's a huge work in progress, and from here on out, it's going to slow down considerably. Considering most of it deals with that damn chasm. Then there's the redstone mechanism, which... <laughs> it took me and another friend. You can help. I can build very good. Uh, I don't know what I can help with. I'm going to be spending most of my time on my own work. But thank you for the offer. Uh... If you're offering to help, um, 
I had to go into pure creative mode for the first time yesterday because I had let a couple other people offering to help in and they decided to go griever on me. And it took me four hours in pure creative to repair the damage they had done, both to the house, the surrounding area. It wasn't pretty. And I pretty much made the promise to myself, I am not letting anyone in here. Because A, I'm going to end up with a bunch of people on my friends list that both not my friends and B, most likely never going to see again. So, Warframe, I'll invite people in to help them out. There's no real risk there. As far as this little personal beauty, sorry, I'm not going to let in people I don't know or trust. Maybe someday if it expands into a situation to where you can get zones where you can cordon up, where you can let people in to do their builds, but not have to worry it being a risk of your own work, maybe. As for right now, it's only going to be trusted people. Oh, what I can make a copy. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know how to make copies of anything on... Uh, PS3 version, or the PS4 version yet. I've not taken that route. And at the rate my collection's been going, I'm gonna need more boxes. Gonna have to make that underground storeroom sooner than I expected. I'm dreading that. Alrighty. My goals for the day for this has been met. Is that a skeleton over there? Are you kidding me? You are not seeking asylum in my house, you bony little bastard. It is no longer morning. My goals for the day have been met. I do believe I am going to switch over to play some Warframe. So thank you, Forna, for chatting with me and offering your support. I shall be switching games now and hopefully either see you on that or see you another time. You have a lovely evening.